Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. So uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you all for coming here to attend our discussion panel. Besides that, I'd like to thank the Cube Day Singapore team also for inviting us. This is our first international conference and we are really excited to be here. I'll start with our introductions. I'm Gauri Maheshwari. I'm a third year undergraduate student from India. And I, I was a Google Summer of Code mentee this year with the project FreeCAD. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, this is Bhavna, and currently I'm working as a C++ developer under Monado XR project. And I am also a founder and lead organizer of SheBuilds. And uh, currently I am working uh, as a C a uh, founder and other C++ developer. And other than that, I'm pretty much active in open source and contributed in different projects like Google Summer of Code, LFX Mentorship, Under Harbor Project, and MLH Fellowship. And currently, I'm trying to giving back to the community, being a part of GitHub Campus Expert. And this red hoodie uh, signs the same. So thank you. Hey, everyone. Hope you're all enjoying the conference. So I'll make a quick intro. For myself, so I'm Shivang Shandilya. I am an undergrad as well. And I like to call myself a DevOps and open source advocate as I have helped various folks get into DevOps and open source. I was also a Google Summer of Code mentee under CNCF only uh, at Armada. Armada is a sandbox project. Uh, then uh, I also serve as a CNCF New Delhi organizer. Basically, again, we conduct events you know, to advocate around CNCF and open source only. I am also a cloud native contributor where I've contributed to various projects such as Armada, Captain, Kubernetes, Meshri, and much more. And uh, yeah, that, uh, that's about it. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Rakshit Gondwal. I am a pre-final year student from India. I am an approver for the Captain project. I, am also, I was also a CNCF fall intern for the Kaiverno project. And I have also been a Google Summer of Code mentee for the Captain project earlier this summer. Then I'm also the CNCG Chandigarh chapter lead and also a team member of we make Devs community. Yeah. OK, so to give justice to the topic of our discussion, I'd like to ask you all, uh, what do you understand by open source programs? So according to me, open source program are the program that gives you an opportunity to learn new things. Uh, open source for me, I think it provides the new contributors the platform to dive and explore the vast realm of uh, open source. So basically, uh, you connect with the experienced developers and get hands-on experience. What more do you want? Uh, for me, it's like a gateway to cloud native or a gateway to open source. It basically gives you a head start from others uh, in the beginning of your journey. Well, I think to conclude it all, I'd say that open source programs allow new uh, people to join the open source ecosystem. And they help provide mentorship and might also give a stipend for what they are working for. So in order to get started to contributing to open source, uh, first way is obviously knowing how to code. But if you're learning how to code or you do not know how to code, you can contribute to the documentation part. You can contribute by making video content, by making written content. That's extremely useful for yourself as you get to know about the project. And it's useful for the community as they get to learn more about the project, for the newcomers as they know how to navigate through the project. Bhavna, would you like to add anything? Uh, yeah, sure. It's uh, a very good opportunity for all of us. And uh, we got to learn new things and meet some amazing people over there. Yeah. Shivang, would you like to add anything else? Uh, well, certainly, there are many ways to you know, get involved into Cloud Native. And uh, like dis uh, discussed by my fellow panelists, Gauri and Bhavna. But if I have to add, I would say uh, first would be the Cloud Native community groups. So if you didn't know, there are several cloud native community groups that are globally active right now. So you can you know, get involved with those, either as a volunteer or attendee or even as a speaker. But what to do if you don't have a community group in your local area? Well, what you can do is take charge in your hands, as discussed by in the previous talk. Uh, so you can take charge in your own hands and you know, start a community group, organize some amazing events. Second, I would say is uh, if you have been contributing to open source, I would recommend you getting involved with CNCF projects as the community in every project that I have joined and contributed to has been really amazing. Third would be it's a program, and I'm pretty sure most of you have not heard of it. It's called CNCF Zero to Merge. 
So the first cohort of this program uh, took place this uh, spring of 2023. And I was part of it. So basically, it is a four-week long program where you are taught how to you know, communicate with CNCF staff, how to work on GitHub issues, and how to create effective PRs. So it's a great way to get started with your cloud native journey uh, with CNCF Zero to Merge. And I would recommend you to keep a lookout for the second cohort that is going to take place in the spring of 2024. OK, so Rakshit, would you like to shed some light on how to get into cloud native via open source programs? Uh, yeah, so in open source programs, there are many open source programs like GSOC, then there's LFX, then there's a shadow mentorship program. So what uh, usually happens is you get a mentor assigned to you, and they'll help you throughout the 12 weeks or 16 weeks, whatever the timeline is. And you can like ask them any question and it's a great way to get started into open source as well as cloud native. And Bhavna, would you like to add anything there? Uh, yeah, as Rakshit mentioned, there are different programs like LFX Mentorship, Google Summer of Code, and way more. So uh, during this particular program, you get assigned by a mentor. Uh, they will guide you throughout the program, assist you during the fellowship if you face any issues. Uh, so uh, I feel like if you're a beginner, just start it through uh, Linux Foundation as well as uh, Kubernetes part of that. So you, got, uh, you, get, you get a right mentor as well as you learn a lot through him or her. Now, we all four of us were part of some of the other programs. So we'll tell you a little about all of the programs we were a part of so that you get an idea of where you can contribute to the cloud native ecosystem. We'll start with Google Summer of Code. So finally, my area of expertise. <laughs> So uh, let's talk about GSOC, okay. So Google Summer of Code, it is a global online program, basically which uh, invites uh, folks who are 18 or older to you know, get involved uh, with contributing to open source. So it's an amazing opportunity. And so uh, it involves large and medium projects for you to contribute to. But the amazing thing is going to happen the next year. They are going to involve small projects as well. So this is going to let you get involved with uh, open source and CNCF more easily. Uh, and uh, if we have to talk about the timeline, so and the start of the 2024, the accepted organizations are going to be listed out. Then basically, you're going to communicate with the community and you know discuss your project ideas. Then you basically have to craft some proposals explaining how you are going to approach the project and a possible solution. And then basically submitting the application and then you know waiting for the end results. Um, Rakshit, can you share about the LFX mentorship program? Uh, yeah. LFX mentorship program, or you can say the CNCF interns, uh, usually happens three times a year. The spring split, then there's the fall split in the end, and I forgot the summer split. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so again, it's like GSOC, uh, just the difference is uh, you'll get to work on CNCF projects. In Google Summer of Code, there are projects like uh, for AI ML, for cloud, then there's web development. But in LFX, there are mostly CNCF projects, and they have usually listed out the skills that you would need to get into these projects. And yeah, you get stipend based on which country you are from. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. And what about the MLH Fellowship? Uh, yeah, so MLH Fellowship is a 12 weeks uh, remote uh, alternative for the student as well as the working professional. So uh, this particular program happens three times a year, like summer, spring, and fall. So if you're someone who's looking to work with the fan companies, because most of the project over there are by different companies like GitHub, Google, and all. So this is a quite good uh, opportunity if you didn't uh, learn DSA and all. So I would highly suggest if you're just starting it out, just apply for this particular program and you got some amazing people over there. Well, you now must be wondering what are the prerequisites for uh, joining any of the programs. Well, the only thing that you need to have is the urge and the zeal to learn new things while contributing. That's the only thing that can take you far and forward. Moving on, uh, I'd like to ask the panelists uh, how to communicate effectively with the community and the maintainers of a particular project. Uh, for me, what worked out the best was I used to attend community meetings of the projects I was interested in. Like, I was interested in Captain Project. Uh, at the start, I used to just go there, sit in the meeting. I didn't know anything, but I used to like be there and see what they were talking about that and that's how i got to learn about things then you don't don't spam the maintainers or people because obviously their first priority is their job they usually have their jobs too 
So don't spam them. It use, if they take two to three days to reply, it's OK. And then, yeah, you can go through the code of conduct to know what uh, to follow the rules of that particular community. Um, Shivang, would you like to add anything? Well, I would say uh, keeping a lookout on the communication channels for every project. So if they are having a, either Slack or Discord or mailing list, so I would recommend you joining those. Because at least you'll know what's going on, as uh, Rakshit just, uh, my fellow panelist Rakshit just said. So you don't need to know everything. Just be involved. Just be there. So uh, that's one thing. Second would be, let's say if you have a problem, I would recommend you know uh, asking for a solution of that particular problem in the community itself. Don't just go around DMing your fellow contributors like I don't I am I want a solution for this. Why? Because your problem can be others' problem too. So if you uh, if you're asking that stuff in the community, so and the um, maintainers are going to provide a solution for this, so it's going to make the stuff easy for other fellow contributors. The third point I would like to say would be uh, don't just go around you know, messaging, direct messaging maintainers or even your fellow contributors. As I myself, I don't know about others, but I think it's an unethical practice because you just, without their permission. So what if you, even if you need to do this, what you can do is get involved in the community, build some connection, make uh, you know get uh, bonded together with the community, and after some time you can go ahead and yeah. So once we get selected into a program, we need to make sure that we are actually learning something from it and not just working there for the money. So uh, how do we maximize the learning while we are in a program? The things that I'd like to suggest are explore the other parts of the project as well. As in, if you're working on a particular issue, make sure that you are knowing the other parts of the project as well. That allows you to understand the project better and contribute to it more effectively. Besides that, I'd say take part in the conversations. Uh, the GitHub issues has the option of commenting on uh, them. So you can take part in conversation and let other people know what you think, where you might be wrong, what you can contribute to. So that way, you'll get an idea of what is working for the project and what is not working. And what is uh, you can learn various things that way. Besides that, would you like to add anything? Yeah, like uh, try to share whatever you are learning or working on that particular project on in form of video content or uh, thread, uh, Twitter thread and way more. And other than that, I would like to add learn from others' code base as well. Because if you want to become a good developer, you need to learn the code base that everyone reads. Because uh, we want the code base which is of high quality and contains the uh, code. And uh, other than that, be open for feedback. Do not always take it in a positive way. Do not uh, take it in a negative way. I'll continue with you only. What do you think are some of the most effective practices of contributing? Yeah, so for me, uh, like uh, uh, try to read the contribution guideline that is being specified on the readme of the particular project. And other than that, uh, uh, always read code of conduct of that particular project, whatever you are doing. And if you're a beginner of that particular project, just go to the good first issue of that particular project, pick one of them. And while solving that particular issue, you got to learn a lot of things over there. So this is my way how I contribute to a particular project. Well, talking about issues, I've got a few points. Uh, and I'm pretty sure most of the folks here know about these points, but uh, you know, just to discuss these. So if an issue is already assigned to someone, I would recommend not just you know uh, sending out a PR for that, you know. Uh, and if even if it's assigned and you see the person has been inactive for a while now, I would recommend mentioning that person and asking if they are still working on the issue or not, and then you know working your way through it. So. That's about the issues. And the next thing I would say is follow project roadmap. So every project out there, CNCF projects, they all have uh, roadmaps. So do give uh, them a look so you'll know what uh, direction the project is heading towards. And you'll get a better idea of what our project is all about and how uh, I need to work towards the project in future. And basically, if you, you know, get a uh, good hold of the project, then you can obviously ask better related queries. Uh, Okay, so like being an approver for the captain project, uh, there are many times like folks would raise multiple PRs or spam PRs. They'll not know how to like use Git. So I'd say that uh, first get uh, first get to know about how Git works or version control works, because 
obviously everyone begins somewhere but the things you can learn on your own you should do and then if you are like looking to contribute to a project such as kubernetes you can also contribute to its sigs sigs are special interest groups so uh, these are groups divided uh, subdivided into a big project so you can contribute in them too and they have multiple programs inside them too okay so now these programs are usually open for people all around the globe so how do we ensure that we are actually promoting collaboration and not competition among the people any thoughts oh uh, yeah uh, that's the main thing of the of this whole thing uh, collaboration over, over competition. competition yeah so like uh, many times people think that if i help him or her he will he she will raise a pr before me and the chances of me getting selected would be less but that's not the case uh, the maintainers see that you are helping pe other people too and it usually leaves a positive impact so you should always help uh, help others and help the community uh if i have to say uh i'll say ki, uh, don't contribute to these open source programs uh, or cncf projects just to for the sake of getting into you know into these programs just don't contribute to these projects okay i'll get admitted to these programs because again the main uh, thing behind this whole open source is collaboration over competition well these programs can very well serve as a motivation but don't just make them your ultimate goal so while contributing uh, to these programs one my it happened with me so i'll say for myself that uh, I felt like other people in the community, they know about the project better because they've been working on it since so long. So I felt less of myself and uh, I felt like I did not know anything and uh, same happened with most of us here. So uh, this is known as imposter syndrome. So how do we make sure uh, to overcome or tackle this imposter syndrome? Any thoughts? Yeah, like I would like to add uh, in this particular stuff, do not compare yourself with others. Like, uh, when I just started my coding journey, uh, I think, like, uh, how I can become a developer like that and so on. So the thing that mentioned over here, uh, like, that person also be at my place uh, being a beginner. And uh, when he started learning new things, he will be uh, reach at that particular point. So why I can't, can't uh, do that? So that's why uh, I try to think about in this way. Other than that, uh, um, uh, try to uh, celebrate your achievements as well. Like uh, plan a trip with your friends, family members and all, and take rest when it is necessary because uh, it would be very overwhelming if we do not take any rest. Uh, well, if I have to say, I would say make a list, okay? Uh, sit down uh, in a room, lock yourself <laughs> and make a list, okay? Set short term and long term goals. Short term would be what I'm going to do in like a month or two and long term could be anything from ranging from you know years to whatever but you know make a list so that uh, your mind is not diverted like i have to do so many things at once so make a list and learn on the go as you go take a uh, one thing at a time don't uh, you know try to learn multiple things learn on the go and next thing i would say is uh, uh, this i learned from the college so uh, the, this uh, thing is known as johari window model so what do you do here is this is called also known as swot analysis so on the piece of paper again, you make four uh, columns where you write your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Here you do this uh, analysis on yourself only, and you see where I am lacking, in which, uh, where I'm strong, what are my threats, and what are my opportunities. So you get a better insight of yourself. So you know, give, the, uh, give these tests a try, and I'm pretty sure they'll uh, you know, help you handle imposter syndrome. Okay, so when we see the CNCF landscape, we see so many projects there. So one must get over, get overwhelmed about how to go about these projects. I was very overwhelmed because 176 projects, there are way too many. So um, what I think is, uh, with, uh, in spite of contributing to a bigger organization like Kubernetes, start with smaller organization projects such. Uh, projects that are sandbox projects or the incubating projects. They have lesser number of contributors, so they need more contributors, and you get a proper mentorship there as you get directly involved in the project. So that would be my suggestion here. Any thoughts, Rakshit? Uh, I'll say that higher the risk, higher the reward. That's uh, true. 
if you are going just for the open source programs, obviously the bigger organizations will have more number of contributors and obviously the chances of your getting selected are less. But again, higher risk, higher reward, you will get more number of rewards, you will get more networking opportunities in bigger projects and yeah. Um, I'd like to add one more thing here. Uh, people from the non-tech background, that is people who are not studying computer science, they usually think that uh, we can't contribute here because we don't have anything, any experience or we haven't studied about it. Uh, so I'd like to say that I'm uh, studying mechanical engineering, he is studying civil engineering, and we are still here uh, in front of you. So there is no foundation of which background you are from. It depends only on your skills. Would you like to add anything here? Yeah, obviously, uh, companies are now looking for skills, not your degree. And if you have the talent, you'll surely get hired. That is so true. Now, we are uh, almost at the end of the discussion. Uh, we'll have uh, some pro tips from each one of us, and then we'll be open to questions. So we'll start with you. Uh, the one tip that I follow right now, too, is aim for the maintainer of a project. Like, obviously, if you are aiming for to become a maintainer of the project, you'll need to have a lot of knowledge about the project itself. And if you are like on that path, everything will fall into place on itself. That is true. Shivang, your pro tip? Uh, if I have to say, if I have to give a pro tip, I would say whilst these programs, you know, allow you to uh, apply for multiple projects at once, I would say target only few, or I would say only one. Because uh, if you're targeting multiple projects at once, then again, imposter syndrome, you won't be able to manage anything at all. So try to go for only one project, give it your role, and I'm pretty sure you'll get in. Um, your thoughts, Bhavna? Uh, yeah, from my side, I would say, like, pick up a project which you want to explore and uh, keep that particular project on watch on GitHub. Uh, whenever a certain user as well as the maintainer uh, create any issues, created a PR, you can uh, review that and you got a notification through email. So I would say being a beginner, it will help you a lot. So this is a pro tip that I can give from my side. My pro tip will be just begin contributing. There is no other way to actually get started than just starting it. So I remember when I wrote my GSOC proposal, I had a three-day weekend uh, holiday. So I wrote my, I wasn't expecting to be getting into the uh, program. So it was a weekend. I wrote the proposal. I sent it to the project uh, maintainer. And eventually, I got selected. So the only pro tip I have here is just begin. Do not stop. That's it. So we are op now open to questions. If you have anything to ask, uh, please go ahead. Again, brilliant minds there. <laughs> uh, you can ask anything, uh, anything regarding to college, university. If anyone of you is a student here, anything. Yeah. When you decide to choose which project you want to involve? OK, so like, if you are looking from the open source programs perspective, uh, they usually release a list of projects that are going to be in that specific program. Like before the LFX mentorship program, there's a list of projects. And they list out the technologies uh, that you would require. So choose that, uh, techno choose that project. Uh, to which your technology matches, like the thing you are more interested in. And obviously, explore projects, and the one which looks good or you're more interested in sounds more cool, just contribute to it. Well, if I have to answer this uh, in my way, because we are having different opinions as a panel. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like, let's just say you found your uh, projects related to your tech stack, right? And there's a really popular project, and there's one that is not popular. Both are CNCF projects, let's say. So I myself would recommend you going for the lesser popular one. First, why? You'll have more chances of getting in, because people are more focused on, you know, I need to get in, let's just say, Kubernetes, and my uh, project in which I was in, let's say, Armada. So I got in because there were not many, not much competition. And people wanted to get the name only, I got into Kubernetes. But the competition is going to be really tough. As he said, high risk, high reward. You can go for it. But then you'll face a lot of competition. Uh, in Sandbox project, what you, uh, you'll have is you Sandbox and incubating, you'll have much more higher chance of you know uh, getting in touch with the maintainers. You'll have much more learning to uh, you know, uh, you'll get much more learning. You'll have a higher chance of getting in. 
and I myself advocate of you know, folks getting into sandbox and incubating projects because they really do need contributors. Graduated projects are having like ton of contributors. If you'll join the Slack channel now, I think there are 100k people in Kubernetes, but uh, the project, my project was, there were only 150 folks. So I was able to learn and connect much more easily. So that's my take. My suggestion here will be choose the domain that you like the most. If it's security, CI, CD, whatever you like, go for that one. Whether it's graduated, incubating, sandbox, anything will work. So go that way, it might be better. Uh, anybody, any other questions? OK, so we will be here till the end of the conference. If you have anything or just have a, uh, have a conversation, uh, come and uh, join us. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.